So, good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to my talk. I'm really excited to talk about building a robotic future with OpenSUSE and open source. So, I love to talk about robots, their past and the present, open source and robotics, and why it's important. And finally, the future of robotics and how OpenSUSE can be a part of it. So before we begin, a little bit about myself. I've been studying robotics since around a year now here in Bavaria. And I really enjoy it since it lets me tinker with both software and hardware. And to see your software do real stuff in the physical world, it's really cool. So best of both worlds with robotics. I've been using Linux for around three years. Manjaro, Arch, Void, lot of PRs package management, technical support, forum support. I also contributed a lot to Manjaro, Sway Flavor, and AOR printer drivers. You get the idea. I, during my distro hopping journey, I stumbled across OpenSUSE. And since Snapper exists, I think I'm stuck here forever now. <laughs> I also contribute a lot to its force. They are our uh, open source Indian-based Linux web portal. I'm sure a lot of you have heard about them here. Some historical background, because when we talk about robotics or robots in general, a lot of people have different idea about, about what a robot is, which is fine because a lot of types of robots exist. You might think about R2-D2 or C3PO from Star Wars. My favorite one is Wally, -E, but we can talk about that some other day. The term itself comes from a Czech word called robota, which means forced labor in 1920. And then we see other terms like robotics come up. Moving on, but really the concept of robot existed before even the term came up. People wanted to automate stuff in way back in historic ancient cultures. Leander da Vinci came up with a really cool humanoid robot design in 1495. There's this mechanical trumpeter by Frederick Kaufmann. It's still here in Dresden. And then, of course, in the 20th century with electron tubes and later transistors, like everything, the Field of robotics also saw major changes. MIT coming up with a lot of unique robots. We see the first industrial robot called Unimate in 1960. Spray paint robot by Trafla, which was later acquired by ABB. And 1968, Shaky. Now I want to cover Shaky because while the development of Shaky in Stanford, they came up with a lot of groundbreaking algorithms and concepts that are still used uh, even today, like algorithm planning, uh, environment representation, computer vision. Shaky was able to map its own environment, use sensors, or make its own decisions, even though those decisions were made by a lot of if-else loops in the background, but it's 1968 we are talking about, so it was quite a big thing in the field. Then coming to the present, I think we can divide the present into two parts, uh, before 2021, before uh, open AI or closed AI, if you want to say that. They, unveiled chat GPT and after chat GPT because now even all of us all of a sudden even my coffee machine is AI powered now if that AI is real AI or how is it different from AGI I won't be able to cover that but AI does play a major role in the field of robotics and we'll see that how uh, advancements in the field of AI go hand in hand with robotics coming back to the present we ha we see robots everywhere uh, delivery robots cobots mobile robots, drones, UAVs, or the robotics is really, really useful in the medical field. Service robots, humanoids, uh, a lot of you have heard about Boston Dynamics, of course. Rovers on Mars, the list goes on. Now coming to the main topic today, open source, and especially open source is robotics, because open source exists everywhere. Nonprofits like uh, Open Robotics, they fund uh, a lot of research in the field. They are the primary maintainers of ROS, Robot Operating System, and Gazebo. Of course, there's OpenCV for computer vision, Carla, which is used as a simulator for autonomous driving research, Robotics Toolbox for MATLAB. I have an exam for this next week. And uh, Llama by Facebook or Meta, uh, the large language model. Uh, so a lot of AI we see today is basically LLMs running in the background. Uh, it, and it's not real AI, but it's still really useful in robotics. And the way it's implemented is also really cool. Uh, recently, a company called Figure One, they released a humanoid robot, which, can, which you can talk to in real time. So your audio input, uh, also speech input goes into as a text. LLMs gives you a text-based response. It comes back. So you're basically talking to the humanoid robot in real time. 
Now, I would like to dedicate a whole slide to ROS because I feel ROS is one of the most important uh, softwares when we talk about open source in robotics. It started with a vision for Linux for robotics in 2007, way back uh, in Stanford, and now it's used everywhere. Like more than 50% of robots uh, shipped in 2022, they had ROS packages in some form or another. Uh, it acts as a middleware and provides you a lot of tools and to build your robot applications. Even NASA uses it in a lot of places. One thing I don't like really about ROS is they only officially support one distribution, which is Ubuntu. There is experimental support for other distros like Fedora, Mac OS, etc. though. Now, why is open source important? O open source is especially important because you can start working from day one instead of building your own algorithms or doing your own robot mechanics or doing your own maths. Instead of reinventing the wheel, you just start working. You can create communities, encourage collaboration, and of course, there's security, security, security. We cannot forget that. How are other Linux distributions contributing? Uh, Ubuntu is really big in the field. They offer a lot of snap packages for ROS. There's Ubuntu Core, which is a special optimized operating system for IoT devices. And they certify a lot of hardware as well, like Raspberry Pis and Dragon Boards. Fedora also offers a special distribution, a special flavor, which is the Fedora Robotics Lab. But OpenSUSE, I feel, can offer something special. Now, what happens when you add OpenSUSE and robotics? Do you get a, I don't know, Gecko bot? Uh, unfortunately, no, since it already exists. But OpenSUSE can be a big part of the robotics community if uh, they start supporting ROS on OpenSUSE officially. Of course, uh, you can use ROS still on OpenSUSE using DistroBox or Docker, but native is always better since more speed, better integration. Collaborate with ROS Germany or unis or companies. Make a special robotics branch for OpenSUSE uh, where we test packages and give a pre-installed version. DLR, which is the Deutsche Zentrum for Luftum Raumfahrt, Germany is NASA basically. They also use OpenSUSE in some places. I once came across one of their robots running OpenSUSE. Uh, it's the default tumbleweed uh, background, uh, if you can see that. The social media team gave me this picture yesterday, really cool of them. This is their agile Justin robot running, doing some machine learning stuff, picking objects and identifying stuff. D uh, DLR also has a OBS branch on OpenSUSE where they maintain their own packages and they have guidelines for open source as well. And I would like, love to give this small shout out to SUSE employee if they're here, Andre Delaporta. They recently contributed for minimum kernel support on Raspberry Pi 5, so thank you. Now, I have some personal to-dos for myself, which I'll, have, which I'll love to complete by OpenSUSE Conference 2025. Create a community, I'll find like-minded people. I, during my research, I came across Innovators for OpenSUSE project, which is an initiative where you can build projects around OpenSUSE and share with the community, which is really cool. Yeah, that's it. If you have any questions, you can ask me now or always drop me an email. I also made a Telegram group if you ever want to share your ideas or project. Now, one question that might be uh, might arise is that Fedora has ROS support already, so RPM, RPM, why not do that on OpenSUSE? I have not tried it. I should, but since support on Fedora is already experimental by community, we'll be dealing with experimental square here if we try to replicate that on OpenSUSE. So, yeah, quite dangerous, not ideal. All right, no questions, so I'll end this with a small... Uh, I have a question. Yeah. Uh, have, have, have there uh, been any steps to port uh, ROS to OpenSUSE, or is this, will this be an effort uh, that will start from the beginning, if we start? Uh, that's a really cool question, because one of the main tasks I do as a student assistant in our uni's lab is to migrate robots from Ubuntu 18.04 to 20.04, 18.04, 22.04, and it's a real pain because Ubuntu breaks and snaps and all that. A lot of robots today are migrating from ROS1 or ROS2, and we are also implementing that in our side. So yeah, if this ever happens, which I hope it does, we should start implementing with ROS2, because ROS1 is slowly dying, and it's, it's not the 
best when compared to ROS2. Oh, yeah. but could you repeat the last sentence of what is dying? Uh, ROS1. I, I, yeah, ROS1 is slowly, uh, slowly phased off and is being, uh, being uh, updated to ROS2 everywhere, really. So if we ever want to officially support ROS, ROS2 would be the better way to go. Thank you. A short question. What I remember from robotics, you need to have real-time kernels and stuff like that. So how does that interplay? Will uh, that work? Again, I think it depends for, for what kind of robot you're building, really. Okay. You can, yeah. All right, I'll love to end this with a small message. Uh, keep calm and use OpenSUSE. Of course, I don't men mention the version, Tumbleweed or whatever, because I don't want to start that debate right now. <laughs> Thank you.